All right, Jude, so do you remember what tier you're at in World of Warplanes? Mm, like one and two. Yep, you have tier one and tier two. Today we're going to be looking at the next level after tier two. And hopefully some of the things I talk about are going to help you be better at playing tier two and also playing tier three and above, okay? All right, let's take a look. So today we're looking at a plane, tier three um, fighter, kind of like your Japanese planes that you like to play. But this is a Bristol 133. So this is on the British line. Um, I know you like the Japanese line. You're mm -hmm. at the A4N, I think. Is that correct? Uh, we're looking at the, sure. at the United Kingdom. This is a line I, I recommend to a lot of uh, new players to the game because it's very friendly for mistakes um, and it's... Do I have any UK planes? You've got this one right here. Oh yeah. Yeah, but you can go to the Bulldog and then after the Bulldog you get a single wing plane which is called the Bristol 133. So this is tier 3 so it gets a little bit tougher but a lot of the same um, gameplay that we'll go over today you can use all the way up until tier 10 when you get your your jets and all that stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I do when I'm in a plane like this is I try to say, well, what is this plane? Well, it's a fighter plane, right? That means it's meant to take other planes down out of the sky, right? Yeah, it's not taking out the ground. Exactly. So we want it to be really good with its turning and with its guns, especially at this uh, tier. So when I set up my plane, I try to set it up for some accuracy. So you can put on this equipment here, this op this sight makes you more accurate. It's better in this plane than the armor. You don't need to worry about armor. You just want to avoid getting hit. So you'll put that on, and that'll make it so that when you're firing, your bullets go where you want them to go. And then I also put, I always put on first aid. Do you know why I put first aid on? Mm-mm. That way, if I'm flying around and my pilot gets shot, I can heal him and he can come back, and that way I can still keep fighting. It's really important sometimes, especially when you're in the middle of a battle, to do that. Now, today's plane that I'm looking at, I do have it fully upgraded. Um, I've got the best engine on it, because I want, to, I want my plane to go as fast as I can get it to go, and I've got um, the best guns on it, too. Having four guns, you see there's two here and two here, means this plane can really start um, knocking the hit points off of the enemy planes if you can get behind them. I see two right there where are the other two. There's two right here. Yeah, you found those. Yes. And then the other two are actually hidden right there. Oh. Pretty sneaky, Looks huh? Looks like eyeballs and then I don't, like eyeballs. Yeah, and a yeah. funky nose, huh? Mm-hmm. So this plane, like a lot of the other planes on this tech tree line, which means like the plane before it and the plane after it, is pretty maneuverable. It means it can turn really well. Um, its guns are okay, but it's really about getting your plane behind the enemy. And how do you how do you get your plane behind the enemy? Um. You don't know. Actually, no. So w one of the best ways to do it first thing most people do is they just look at their screen. Well, where's the enemy? Is he over here? Is he over there? Is he down there? And you decide where you want to go. One thing that you want to do in any plane is you're going to look at your altitude. And we're going to look at that in the game today. And you try to, for me, I try to stay as high up that I can as long as the altitude's in the white, um, right before it turns into yellow. Because that lets me, that means I'm as high as I can be still being turny. If I go higher into the yellow, I might not be able to turn as much. If I go down into the white, it means I can turn really good behind the enemy planes. And if you go up at red? Oh yeah, then I become just like a floating blob in the air. <laughs> then you'd have to go down! Down, exactly. So another thing you can do, and you're going to see on today's game, is you can look at your map down on the bottom right hand corner. There's going to be a map there, and you can see what planes are coming towards you and what planes are going away from you, and you can decide 
who do I want to move towards and who do I want to move away from? Um, and last but not least, definitely not least, you can hit your um, your targeting button on your keyboard. That's and it, so when you hit the the um, uh, I've got it set up for my space bar, but I, f I forget what it actually comes onto. On your controls, it will be hello. It is lock nearest target. So I actually changed my bombing button from the space bar to a button on my mouse. Um, but that way I could change the space bar. I just hit the space bar and it tells me what's the closest plane to me. And I'll have an arrow on my screen, you're going to see that, where I know what the next closest plane is. And with a plane like this plane that's very turny, you can hit the your target button. Um, or whatever the button is that you have it for and it'll lock on the closest target and you know who's the closest to you and you can start turning towards them right away oh yeah so you then you could go shop at target or you could go shop at target it won't help you in the game but you'd at least have some clean toilet paper yeah alright so let's uh, let's take a look at the game and we'll see uh, we'll see if I do those things I'm talking about okay alright so in the beginning of the game first thing I do is I look at the map and I, I look at the enemies so I know that I'm going to be going over this sector but let's look at the map we've got a command center here that brings in bombers we want to head that way and we're going to look at the enemy list we've got a fighter there that can turn with us and then the other humans are some heavy fighters so we need to watch out for them we look at who's on our team and that way we can see what kind of support we might have. So I'm going to go to this command center because I know it's important. It's going to help those bombers come in, right? Yeah. Alright, so right now I'm just kind of cruising along. I, there's no rush in getting to that sector quickly. I don't want to be the one that everybody shoots at. And this will help me save my boost if I need to get out of trouble. But as soon as I start seeing these guys, do you know when you start firing at them? When the red bar comes up. Yep, right when there. that. You got it right. When the hit points bar comes up. So see, now I see the bar. I start mm -hmm. firing at them. Now, what about where Where do you see me firing? Um, Right in front of them. Yep, because I'm letting them run into my bullets. Yeah, good job. So if he's moving a little bit up, like that guy was, I aim a little bit above him. If he was coming down, then I'd aim a little bit below him. And so you'll notice, um, when this guy dies, I see the next guy right in front of me and I start turning. Now one thing that I do quite a bit is I will use the S button quite a lot and the W button. What's the S? So the S is your air brake. What that does is it starts to slow you down. So if I'm trying to make a really, really tight turn, like right now, I'm hitting that S button because I want to get behind this guy so he doesn't get away from me. You can you can do that in your turny fighters like this plane. All right, so I do have to be careful of planes coming right at you because they can crash into you and take all mm -hmm. your hit points, right? I have have you had that happen? Actually, only once. Yeah? Because um, the plane that I play most is the tier 2 Japanese plane. Yeah, the A4N? Mm -hmm, I'm pretty sure that's the one. And it's like really good at turning. So. Yeah, the Japanese mm -hmm. planes are really good at turning. Even better than these British ones. Um, but the reason I recommend these British ones is because the Japanese ones catch on fire sometimes kind of easy. And one thing you do not want to do when you're in a um, airplane is be on fire. There's not a lot of options you've got, is there? What are you gonna do? You gonna spit um, on it? No. Yeah. Um, the other problem, well, with my Japanese plane is that um, it goes so fast. Yeah. Well, sometimes it could that. Crash. What button slows you down? Do you remember? The S. That's right. So like right here, I'm hitting the S button so I know I can get behind him. 
and then what I'll do is when I know I want to get to the next guy see um, I know it's gonna take me just a second to get here so I don't need to use the W button but if I know I need to get away from somebody or I want to get to somebody really quick I will hit the uh, W button to boost like right now I'm boosting because I'm trying to get over to this guy before he kills my guy like no that's my friend Wow, oh, you jerk it's on now so here he comes as soon as his bar comes towards me I started firing at him and as I saw him turn I started slowing down that way I could react to him if he was gonna turn left right up down because I was slowing down I had more time to react to that does that make sense? Yeah, but I have a question yeah. about um, when the plane's moving forward mm -hmm. and you're right behind it like mm -hmm. normally you would when it's turning, you would shoot in front of it, but how do you shoot it? Like, how do you shoot it when it is just, you know, in front of it? That's a great question. So if it's going in a straight line and it's really close to being in front of you, you can aim right for the center part of the aircraft. They call that the fuselage. It's what the wings hang on to. Um, it's where you know the propeller is attached to so that that center part you can aim your bullets towards that and um, do that now see that guy there I was chasing him down but he was faster than me I'm not gonna keep chasing him and waste I'd waste my time right so I decided to turn around and go for something slower or something that's coming towards me that's something that you need to do from time to time especially if you're in a fighter because fighters aren't the fastest things out there if you run into heavy fighters they're usually faster how come heavy fighters are faster? Well, so the heavy fighters are faster, but they can't turn as good. Um, so that means if you're trying to shoot planes in a heavy fighter, you need to be paying attention to where they're going. Because if they start to turn away, you're going to miss them, and then maybe they can get behind you. So like once you get good at regular fighters, that's when I say it's best to try a heavy fighter and something with a lot of speed. What um, tier so, wait, is Watch this. See how I'm aiming right for the center? Yeah. He's just going straight. I don't need to aim ahead of him or behind him or left or right. He's just going straight. Like, do -do 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 Why are all my hit points disappearing? And so what? you can just shoot him like that. What? What about my question that I was just Yeah, asking? what was your question? Um, what tier do you get heavy fighters? Um, you can get heavy fighters for like Germany at tier 2. Um, it just matters which direction you decide to go. But I recommend trying to get to at least like tier 6 on a fighter line. Uh oh, look at this guy. He's going too high. See, he's up in the yellow. He might even be in the red for his, um, his altitude. And so because of that, he can't turn and he can't go fast. And see right here I'm hitting the brakes, so that way I can turn really tight and actually catch up to him. His plane can actually turn better than mine, but because I used the brakes there, and because I still had some speed, I could um, speed up to him and then stop and turn a little bit where he didn't have any energy, he didn't have any speed, so he was just kind of floating around. And that was his mistake there. So now I'm kind of deciding do I go up? No, uh, it's too much, too much speed to go up. But the reason um, you're asking about heavy fighters, the reason I recommend learning to play these fighters first, is because the heavy fighters are, a, they take more thinking, and you want to be able to know what you need to do and where you need to go. Are you good at playing heavy fighters? What's that? Are you good at playing heavy fighters? Um, pretty good. I'm pretty good at most Do of the planes, any? except for like bombers. Do we have any heavy fighters? I do. Um. Maybe we can show that another time. Okay. So this particular game, I was able to make sure that I was paying attention to the map and watching what planes were coming in and what ones were going away and decide to try to attack the ones coming towards me and I would hit my target button to find the closest one and I'd hit my brake or hit my boost 
to try to get to that person. So I was able to get 15 kills. Um, do pretty good for tier 3. I normally get like 6 kills. 6 is good. That's not bad at all. Um, it's not... I wasn't showing this one to show like, oh, I'm really good at tier 3. I was using this one specifically because it had different times where I was going against different planes. I tried to stay at the good altitude for my plane and I tried to decide when to hit the boost and when to slow down so that I could turn a little bit better and get behind those other planes. Okay. So this is just like a, a basic introduction to how you want to play especially these low tier planes, these low tier fighters. Um, because a lot of the low tier fighters are pretty maneuverable, they're pretty turny. Um, and to get an advantage over those other planes, sometimes you need to boost, and sometimes you need to hit your air brakes. Yeah. And you always want to pay attention to your altitude. If you're going too high, it means it's going to start slowing you down, even though you might not want to slow down, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it do makes you sense. Watch, do you watch the altitude when you're flying? No. Mm. Do you think you can do that next time you're in there? Okay. And what about using the W and the S keys? Mm-hmm. I use um, the W a lot. He uses the W. Yeah, everybody likes going faster. You're, you are my son, so I'm always using the W button. I'm always running out of boost. The only time I use it is like when I'm far away from where I need to be. Oh, okay. I use it because I'm impatient and I want to get to that next plane quickly. <laughs> in this game, I tried not to use it. I tried to think of... I tried to be mindful of using the Hawks. boost too much. Hmm? Hawks. Yep. Uh, or vultures. I don't know what they are up there. Vulture <laughs> hawks. Vulture hawks? Hawk vultures? Vulture hawks. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you use that kind of tactic of speeding up when you need to get to the next target and slowing down when you want to try to get behind them, and if you know what your, your target button is so that you can target that next plane quicker, as soon as a plane blows up, I hit that button um, that targets the next plane so I can know exactly where I'm beep, going and I start beep. turning right away towards beep. them. Exactly. Well, if anybody else has any questions about this plane, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Hopefully, hopefully these um, tactics help um, get more kills and help get more wins. Do you think it'll help you get more more sh um, planes to be able to shoot down? Yeah. Yeah. I might get ten next. Time. You think you can get ten now? That's four more planes than I normally kill. It's a pretty big jump, huh? Ten is a is a good amount. Well, if anybody has any questions about the plane or um, has any comments, feel free to comment down below. I'll be happy to help out. Have a good one.